Welcome to Keeper of the Mountain. Today on Keeper of the Mountain, we get to do something that I actually know how to do and have done before. Yep, we are going to convert a stove, a kitchen stove, from natural gas to propane. And the reason I'm showing you this is because everybody buys a new range from time to time and they're scared to death of gas. And really, this is something any handyman should be able to do. Anybody with any mechanical aptitude whatsoever should be able to do this process without worrying about blowing yourself up or hurting yourself. Now I've been doing this since 1980 so I, I've done it once or twice and so let's get with it. Let's uh, take a look at this. I've got an oven right here. It's brand new still in the wrapper so let's unbox this thing and just get it converted. Okay, what we have right now is a brand new Whirlpool range. And this is a standard range. Now you got to make sure when you order them that you actually get one that comes with a conversion kit. Because a lot of them, you know, from the factory you'll get them and they're, they're, they're all set up for natural gas because they figure most people have natural gas but some of them come with the kit. If not, you got to make sure you get the kit. If you hook up propane to a natural gas appliance, you won't have a stove. You'll have a flamethrower. I know that's exciting, but you could burn your house down. The reason that you need to convert these things is because Propane runs on about double the pressure, and closer to three times the pressure that natural gas does. And you'll end up with a flamethrower. Here is the kit right here. You have five orifices. These orifices will be the correct ones because, and you'll be able to see it, I'll show you. They're a lot smaller than the ones for the, pro, for the, for the natural gas because like I said before, the propane is under a lot more pressure. By a lot, I'm, I'm talking, here's the difference. Propane is, is run under a pressure of right around 11 inches of water column. Somewhere in a neighborhood between 9 and 13 inches. Where natural gas is run on 3 and a half inches. Now, that probably doesn't mean a lot to a lot of people, but... Uh, three and a half inches is less than a quarter of a pound and 12 to 13 inches is right around a half a pound so it's quite a difference now one thing you have to do is remove the the lid to the oven because it's kind of heavy and fragile all at the same time so right down here there's this little bracket like this you, you bring it back here all the way and you do that on both sides then you take your lid and you just lift it up like this and it comes right out and now it's out of your way okay now there's several different sizes of burners on this stove there's the large one which uses a uh, like a hundred and this is like a hundred and sixteen orifice which is a little bigger than the rest of them this one here is the next size smaller and it, it is a looks like an 88 and then we have a smaller one over here on the back corner that is a uh, look, looks like a 70. So we got these three different sizes. The two in the front are the same size. They're large and I've got two of those. So I just, I mean it's pretty obvious. The bigger the burner, the bigger the orifice. And so you just lay them out in order. And then you find the right size socket because the one that fits this is going to fit the ones you're pulling out because they're down in this center hole. But the problem you're going to have with a, with a socket, once you stick it down there, because these are brass, they're not going to stick to magnets. So you can't use a magnetized nut driver. And it's 11.30 seconds, by the way, this one. And that's what most of them are. 
And I've seen guys use putty. I've seen them use all kinds of things. But I don't like using uh, putties or, or, or thread sealing things because that can plug orifices. So I just use some tape. I get some painter's tape and stick in there and stuff the orifice in there. And see that? It holds it. And then I have to worry about it coming out. But yet it doesn't plug it because it doesn't leave anything behind. So let's change this first one. So I'll take this one out. There it is, see? Right there. And we take the one that goes back in, stick it in there. And carefully go right back down in there. And it should just... And it wasn't in there that snug, and if you over tighten it, you will break things. So don't crank on it. You know, just use your fingertips and get it nice and snug. That's plenty. And there we go. We just have three more to do, and the stove top will be done. You now you're going to run into a problem with the smaller burners because the socket's not going to fit down in there. So what you need to do is get out your screwdriver and take these two screws out of the center. And you gently lift this up because it'll have a wire hook to it. That's the igniter. You just kind of set that off to the side. And you grab hold of this and you hold it up where it belongs and put the, put the screws back in there. And it's important to do this step because if you don't put the screws back in you're going to twist all the piping underneath this lid up into knots and it's not going to work properly. So you put these screws back in, run them down so, so this is stable again. And then the, it fits right down in there. And don't be afraid to change your tape and always check down in there because sometimes the tape comes out. See that? The tape came out of the out of the socket. And you don't want to leave that down in there because it'll mess up the fire. Now you pull these screws back out. Now that you have the top all done, this is you're going to find out why we took the door off. Because we got to pull this out, which is the bottom. Sometimes the bottom's held in with screws, but in this case it's not. It's just sitting in there on these little clips. And here what you have is you have your igniter for your stove, for your oven. And this is the burner tube right here. And your orifice is right back in that spot right back there. There's one screw right here. We got to pull that screw out, and then that whole burner tube comes out. You just pull it off to the side and work it out a little bit here, and set it off to the side, and you can see the orifice right there. And then you just change that with the appropriate sized socket. back together like that okay so we've changed the the orifice down here and if this was a higher end unit it would have another one right up here on the top for the broiler but this is one with a broiler drawer so it only has the one orifice to change in there so now we got to pull the bottom drawer out the broiler drawer out because we have to pull all the parts out of the We've got one more thing to change. There is your regulator. You can see that little cap that a screwdriver fits in. We're going to have to change that. Not the whole work, uh, the whole regulator, just make an adjustment to it. You know, you see this 
little thing here. You have to kind of remove this. It's some of these pop out, some screw out. This one screws out, and you got to flip it over. Now what this does is it makes this flat part longer and it pushes harder on the spring and raises the pressure because before that little regulator down there was set at three and a half inches. Now with this flipped over it's going to be 11 inches just where you need it. So we stick it back in. You can see how the door to the oven would get in the way to do this. I'm snug it down nice and there you go. This bad boy is ready to install in the house and start doing some cooking. First we need to put the base in. All clipped in. Make sure you get all the cardboard out of this thing. And put all your racks back in. Flip your little clips back. There you go. One stove ready to go. There is one converted stove from natural gas to propane. Now it's ready to go. Mm -hmm.